Leaders, if anyone in your org is saying we're not ready for AI agents, they're wrong. If you are asking, are we ready for AI agents? Are AI agents mature enough for us? You're wrong. While you are figuring out how to perfect your AI readiness deck, Walmart has automated 95% of their bug fixes with 200 specialized agents. AI agents are here in production at Fortune 100 companies right now. Here are the six principles that Walmart and others have used to build AI agents into production workflows. And you can absolutely go after that this quarter. You do not have to wait. This is not a 2026 conversation. One of the things that I worry about is that companies are going to take AI agents too slowly, like traditional software. Like, okay, maybe we'll be ready. We'll add it in 2026. No, if you see an AI agent use case, go after it and go after it aggressively. So what are those six principles? We're going to dive right in. Principle number one is architecture first thinking. So executives tend to ask me, Nate, which model should we bet on for AI agents? Wrong question, guys. The right question is which architecture delivers the workflows we're looking for. Model advantage lasts maybe a quarter at best. Architectural advantage is something that persists for years. So the principle is this. You want to build model agnostic orchestration that isn't dependent on particular models to execute particular workflows. In particular, you want to make sure that your agents are selected, evaluated, swapped, and combined individually. And you do that based on the architecture and what it demands, the workflows, right? This comes back to your orchestration layer being the competitive bet, not the models. The models are replaceable commodities. You can build a model orchestration layer, which is exactly what Walmart built, and that is going to get you much, much farther. So you want to be in a place where you can deploy central orchestrators that manage specialized agents, like Walmart's YB model is what they use, W-I-B-E-Y. You can look it up. They are designed to tackle a range of tough tasks with appropriate tooling, right? You can go after that by separating out your workflows into tasks, delegating those appropriately, aggregating them up, having appropriate guardrails and governance. It's system design. You're designing a system in which models sit and do particular tasks with particular tools. That way, you will have infrastructure that enables you to switch models regardless of what comes out tomorrow. Microsoft cares so much about this, they retired their Autogen framework entirely to unify around an agent framework. 80% of enterprises out there are starting to get into orchestration layers, roughly speaking. If you are going directly to models, you're building AI agents on sand. It's not going to last. Principle number two, learning compounds. And with AI agents, you need to invest early in order to get ahead of the market on compounded learning in 18 to 24 months. JP Morgan has had 18 months of institutional learning and you cannot buy, steal, or, or replicate that with better tech. They have spent 18 months on AI agents already in late 2025. Every day you wait, that gap widens. Right now, you may not be competing with JP Morgan, so you don't care, but that's what we're talking about when we talk about compounding learning. Memory systems need to be turned on early to turn adoption into a permanent advantage for you. Organizational learning accumulates. Competitors are going to have to face unclosable gaps because you are going to have agents trained on more data than they have always. Always. So you want to be in a place where you can deploy early and capture significant percentage gains in accuracy, in completion, et cetera. You basically preserve an accuracy and quality gain as an edge over time because you are always getting the best models against a growing body of data that other people don't have. This gives you asymmetric strategic value. So you want to implement memory augmented agents inside an orchestration layer that learn your organizational context, that track the information that matters, when it matters, and how it relates to decisions. And yes, the examples I'm giving you, that's exactly what's happening in task-appropriate ways. In this case, for Walmart, it was triaging bug tickets. That was really important. That's what they focused on. Focus on systems that are able to absorb and understand meaningful workflows. Make sure they have clear terminology they can learn from, like dictionaries. Make sure they have clear workflow patterns. Make sure they have really, really crisp precedents 
to work against, how things have worked in the past, how you've done business logic in the past, how you handle data ambiguities, and make sure they have exception paths. 200,000 JP Morgan employees have gotten 450 use cases into AI agent land. Basically, they've they've uploaded those use cases. They've had AI agents start to get to get into those use cases. A system deployed today will understand your organization as well as JP Morgan does now for those 450 use cases in 2027, right? Don't wait. That's the whole point of this video. Don't wait. AI agents are ready now. That is one of the big things that has shifted in the past few months is that there is no reason to wait. It isn't even as expensive as it used to be. AI agent SDKs are out there for major model makers all over the place. They're out there for cloud providers. You can assemble AI agent frameworks. Your team can. Principle number three, let's talk about workflows. I've been referencing it a little bit. Demos are gonna get you applause or get your engineers applaud, but, but the workflows that I'm talking about are really aimed at real ROI. And that is the difference that most executives talk about when they get AI right. Enterprise AI spending is scaling by like triple digits a year in percentage point terms, but it's scaling because boring automation prints return on investment. It really like the, the return on investment is sky high if you can pick specific automations for defined workflows and stick agents against them. And so you should be looking not at feature counts, not at the number of agents you launch, not at login metrics, not at the number of tickets even, you should be looking at the rate of correct completion for workflows that matter to the business. Can you get to 90% plus AI automated completion for workflows that matter to the business? Recurring automation will compound in value in a way that flashy demos will never do. If you can get to you know, call it 30% automation in month one, and you have a dedicated team working to drive that number, the value just compounds as that team bites off more edge cases and is able to knock out that workflow and then go on to the next workflow. And eventually it gets easier and easier as you start to stamp these out. Identify the high frequency, high cost workflows first, of course. You want to focus on workflows that have enough defined inputs that you can have tools called against defined inputs and the agent can make correct decisions at a very high rate to fully complete the workflow. If you can't get that, pick a different workflow initially, because if you pick a high ambiguity workflow initially, it's gonna be hard to get success, you'll grow discouraged, and you probably won't go after workflows with the aggression that you need to. Principle number four, vertical defensibility. So a better model can replace a generic tool overnight, right? Maybe chat GPT-6 comes out, it becomes amazing. And you worry about your custom tunes special model because it's out of juice. Or you worry about your generic tool that was just going to do one simple thing and then chat GPT just beats it. But if you have vertical expertise, backed by vertical specific data, backed by your vertical specific expertise, encoded in business rules, encoded in logic, that takes years to build. That can't be commoditized. That becomes an agent framework that a better model complements. You basically want to give the organizational context to the model as memory, as specialized tool calls, as special workflows. And that becomes something that a better model only enhances because you have vertical defensibility encoded in the context of the orchestration layer around the model. You don't need to worry about a better model un undoing the value that you've built. It actually just enhances it because it's smarter, which enables you to do higher quality work, tackle more difficult problems, hit higher completion rates. You get the idea. The principle is to specialize and pick vertical specific workflows. And if you're building for the customer, if you're in a B2B space, watch out for those generic horizontal capabilities. Those are very much at risk of disruption right now. Generic tools do get optimized out of existence because a general model comes along and they just optimize too fast. And they were like, we're gonna be a generic tool for everybody for this specific thing. And like, people don't care. As an example, the chat with your PDF tools, that's going away because you can just upload a PDF and chat with it now, see? Generic tool, it solved a problem, it's no good now. But if you have a vertical specific workflow around healthcare or around finance, that is not going away when a better model comes out. 
And so this is really good news for businesses that have deep vertical expertise and comparative advantage in specific things. If you have comparative advantage around a fintech thing or a healthcare expertise, if you deeply understand the regulatory environment around real estate acquisition in a particular state, whatever your expertise is, build vertical specific orchestration frameworks, embed the domain expertise inside the workflow as much as you can, but keep it out of the model because then you can swap the model in and the model will learn your verticals, compliance, terminology, decision patterns, et cetera, from the tools, from the context, from the orchestration layer and be able to operate. And so for example, a legal compliance framework might understand privilege, a healthcare memory system might understand consent in a certain way, manufacturing agents can understand equipment history, you get the idea. But critically, these require the ability to call in that context, not to assume the model has it built in because you don't have to assume that. You can get a better model swapped in tomorrow and the vertical specific piece can live inside your business as part of that agent orchestration layer. Principle number five, compliance is a competitive moat with agents. So we talk about the EU AI Act a lot because it is hugely relevant for any business that, that does any kind of volume in the EU. Enforcement is gonna begin in the next year. You have to have a compliance framework that actually works, but if you do, it becomes a moat. And I would assume that you want compliance frameworks that scale for you and anticipate emerging regulatory environments in the United States as well, which are happening on a state-by-state -state basis and are very complex. You want to think about the regulatory infrastructure that enables you to show auditability, traceability, security-first vendor integrations, policy controls. Those are all things, spoiler alert, that come from a solid orchestration layer. They are not things that the next model, ChatGPT6, is going to give you for free. They are things that you have to build for your vertical that essentially are like an extension of your expertise into the regulatory space touched by AI. You are building, you are forging an orchestration layer for agents that captures the regulatory nuance of your world. I talked about healthcare earlier. Well, HIPAA is relevant in the US, right? You have to think about privacy. How do you show that your agentic framework is HIPAA compliant? How can you show that at the database level? How can you show that in the run traces you have for agents? How can you show that in the ability to generate audit frameworks that people who need to look at your systems and sign off on them can easily verify and understand? We are pioneering here, right? We have not had a year of agent maturity yet. We do now. Like the clock started a couple of months ago, and I am issuing this warning because I have heard too many times from leaders that they are still picking the model. They are waiting for agents to be fully ready. Please don't wait. Please don't wait. Principle number six, velocity matters more than perfection. And I feel like that's a wonderful segue, right? If you can get to something in six weeks that gives you an 85% completion on a particular workflow task, that is going to beat a six month planning cycle. That is gonna be thinking about this for the budgetary 2026 cycle. Please think about how you are building speed into your systems. And I'm saying that on multiple dimensions, both in the first run of the agent and how you get it going in your hiring plans and how you're hiring for engineering talent to get you there and also, think about the fact that agents themselves are accelerators. A good agent orchestration layer delivers an accelerated impact across not just the workflows it touches, but everybody around that agent because they're no longer dealing with that. Let's go back to Walmart. Walmart is no longer dealing with the context switching costs, the team drag that comes from manually dealing with all of those bugs because the agents are doing it. There is a speed up effect across the team. And so if you can invest in velocity now to get into an agent deployment, you are going to get velocity speed up dividends after it's deployed. And so you should think about where in your business you have the most blast radius effect if you deploy an early workflow for agents. What is something that is a huge pain point for teams where you can deploy an agent and you can see a tremendous speed up, not just because that task gets done, sure, we all know that's gonna happen, but because other teams aren't touching things that have been incredibly painful. So here, here is the critical piece. I want you to go back to the beginning with me. What we have here is a decision cascade. And I wanna walk through all six and show you how they go together. You are picking an architecture 
because a model agnostic orchestration survives churn. Inside that architecture, you are deploying memory because you are starting institutional learning to generate unclosable gaps with your competition. Then inside the architecture with the memory, you're automating workflows, you're closing loops that generate recurring, compounding returns because you're actually finishing those workflows completely. And you are picking those workflows around verticality. You are building expertise that you cannot commoditize. That entire system is going to be built inside a regulatory competitive moat. You are going to think about the regulatory environment you're in, and you're going to recognize that if you can demonstrate compliance proactively with agents, you have a moat just as you have a moat with memory and you have a moat with verticality. Compliance is a specialized skill set that agents can learn and you can teach it to them for your business. Last but not least, moving fast enables you to generate compounding returns, not just from the initial agent deploy, but because this entire system generates an acceleration for the business. And that's what Walmart found. And that's what you're going to find. And so my challenge to you is do not wait. Your competitors who are doing this are not waiting to be perfectly ready. They are figuring out very scrappily how to apply these kinds of principles to build production agents. There is no technical gap here. You may have a talent gap you need to close and you can go and get the talent for it, but there is no technical gap. Agents are ready for production. There is no reason to wait. And people who are asking me whether it is time are already late. Don't be that person. You have the principles here. You understand how to think in agentic terms. If you, if you listen to this video a couple of times, you understand more about agentic orchestration than 90% of the C-suites I talk to. This is how you need to think to build agentic systems that last and are sturdy both this year and into next year and beyond. These, are, these become systems that have ROI and investment value, not just flashy demos. So build to last, build now, and don't ask me if we're ready for AI agents because we're, it's already too late. We are ready, we are done, we're deploying, they're at the Fortune 100 level. We are off to the races.